Hi, my name's Doris Spitak, and this is the Couch Potatoes Handbook to Exercise. Let me start off with a disclaimer. The title of this video is just a little misleading since I'm not exactly a couch potato. Alright, so I probably do it more than my fair share of TV. And last time I checked, videos aren't books, although they can still provide helpful tips. But accuracy aside, here it is, the Couch Potatoes Handbook to Exercise. I have the misfortune to be born into a family of activists in both senses of the word. I'm fine with the whole raising money for charity and doing my part bit. Actually, I love that. But when being active means getting up and moving around, count me out. In a family of health-conscious, trying-to-be-fit people, I don't exactly have too much support with that. My older sister, Adriana, who unlike me was tall and skinny to begin with, does some kind of workout every day. These workouts preferably involve being able to shriek, gross, that guy has a six-pack, while ironically working toward that very state, and preferably something impossible like lifting dumbbells while doing sit-up and managing to look like a fashion plate all the while. I, on the other hand, am the massive sweaty blob in the corner trying to get away with toe wiggles. Rule. Wiggling one appendage, such as a toe, while making loud grunting noises and trying to look like you're working does not a workout make. Sad, but true. Although the other two members of my immediate family, my dad and my mom, aren't quite as gung-ho about the whole workout routine, they still have their schedules. My mom insisted on purchasing this giant stationary bike, which she pedals on in the morning, and my dad pedals on at night. Along with her other workout, my sister also does the whole bike thing, they compare their mileage and all their burnt flesh, uh, that is calories, Six miles, seven and a half, eight miles, and 15 minutes. And of course, I'll trump that with almost two miles in 30 minutes and lots of complaining tip if you feel like you're not up to par with super achieving members of your family on the stationary bike wear a proud smile with a half rueful expression and get kudos from your mom for making an effort it's kind of like an honorary award the thing is i don't exactly excel in the sit-up or push-up department my sister's too good at those i'm obviously not the fastest peddler on the bike i wouldn't even call it pedaling it's more like trudging while sitting down with my feet on pedals so what can i achieve in here's a rule find at least one exercise activity you can say you are and actually be better in. this way you won't seem like a total loser for me my fallback lies in Oh, I'm not so great with speed. I like endurance stuff. You know, like hiking. Hiking is convenient for me because you trudge long distances. One time I went five miles in one go, see lots of nature, and most importantly, neither my sister nor my mom, my most serious competitors, like to hike. Meaning, for one, they can't say that they're better at it, and for two, they can't dispute me when I say I'm good at it. I usually go hiking with my dad, and since he likes to stop and point out primeval ferns, effects of erosion, outgoing squirrels, interesting plant growths, and various other things, I can usually keep up. In other words, hiking is the ultimate exercise activity for me. I get rid of my competitors, and I get a witness in the bargain. When I do drag myself over to the stationary bike for 30 minutes of sweaty torment, I usually bring a computer or a good book with me. To me, exercise is kind of like a small headache. The pain usually goes away, or at least is diminished, if you don't think about it. It's a little harder for me to focus on torturous uphill pedaling on the bike when I'm immersed in reading about surviving the Canadian wilderness, I was reading Hatchet, or Why Washington is Frozen, an article in Time magazine. On the other hand, getting that immersed might also distract me from my pedaling and slow me down. So here's a prescription with side effects. Try to have some kind of entertainment like music, radio, a good book, or maybe even a computer to work on while you're exercising helps kind of distract you from the pain. The side effect, it might distract you from your goal, exercising as well. I was actually taking my computer and trying to put it on a desk and kind of box and line it up, and all the while you can imagine me for just sitting there not pedaling. So take this prescription with a grain of salt. A more obvious way you can put that into action is by exercising in ways where you don't even realize you're exercising. 
I go to lots of conventions, for example. Recently, I was in Orlando, Florida for the Florida Education Technology Conference. And walking around that sprawling convention center with its million square feet of conference space, and we seem to have walked in on the wrong end, gave me more exercise than I probably realized or I probably wanted. If you walk or exercise with purpose and for a goal, for example, running to save your house from a fire, you'll get exercise often without even realizing it. No, I'm not saying you should set your house on fire or set any fat people's houses on fire. Do not do that. But try to see what parts of your life, say taking the elevator, you could replace with walking, like taking the stairs instead. It's a quick and easy way to justify your exercise and give it a point. This week, my sister and I are going to VegFest, this huge vegetarian festival with over 500 free food samples in Seattle. Okay, so the walking around, exercising to get food might be a little bit at cross purposes, but there are always exceptions. Since this is the Couch Potatoes Handbook to Exercise, I thought I might insert a section about quick and easy ways to exercise while, you guessed it, lounging around on the couch. Yesterday night, I was trying to sneakily watch the Jay Leno show, so I started doing sit-ups and an improvised push-up from the couch. Don't just sit on the couch, sit up on the couch. Another kind of tying in entertainment while exercising, um, try turning your couch, and by extension your TV, into your place for exercise. Uh, tip, if you're going to be watching TV anyway, you might as well make your couch time constructive. Come up with ways to exercise while you're doing everyday stuff like watching TV, like doing jumping jacks or sit-ups. Ultimately, it's important to get moving somehow, but that somehow is up to you. Thanks again for watching the Couch Potatoes Handbook to Exercise. Now get out there and get moving.